Там очень большие уровни радиоактивного излучения, и поэтому туда подойти крайне тяжело. Ну и зачем туда пускать людей, когда тут может техника сходить? Роботы сажены на землю, чтобы шавать лицевые дебри на дверь. 60 метров ниже, другие роботы собирают его и сбрасывают в дырки. But after a few days, the ambient radioactivity begins to affect even the machines. Their electronic circuitry can't hold up. They go berserk and break down. One of them hurtles itself into the breach. Robotic machines are no longer an option. Men will have to replace them. Russian soldiers, nicknamed bio-robots for the occasion. This battalion of young reservists is preparing to go up onto the roof of the third reactor for the first time. They're between 20 and 30 years old. All of them reservists called to the front for the most dangerous and deadly battle of Chernobyl. No human has ever worked in zones as radioactive as this. General Nikolai Tarakanov is in command of the operation and personally oversees every detail, down to the hand-sewn lead suits that every soldier is forced to make the night before the attack. On their fronts, on their backs, in their boots, they were covered in lead. A helmet, a mask to protect against beta rays. And a special apron. Double layers of protection on the hands. The whole uniform weighed 26 to 30 kilos. Obviously, some people didn't want to go. But they had to. There were reservists. They had to go. For me, there was no question. I had to go do my duty. Who was going to do it for me? Who was going to clean up this disaster and stop the spread of radioactivity all over the world? Somebody had to do it. Two and a half weeks of hell. But hell only lasted two to three minutes for each soldier, or sometimes even just 40 seconds when the level was too high. We were careful to calculate out the time to save as many lives as possible. When the siren blows, a crew of eight soldiers rushes up onto the roof, along with an officer. Their mission is simple. Shovel up the radioactive debris as quickly as possible and throw it off the roof. According to General Tarakanov's calculations, the level of radioactivity, estimated to be 7,000 ronjons per hour, only allows the bio-robots 45 seconds on the roof. Only enough time for a couple of shovelfuls. Look 
каждом была своя маленькая долика, как обычно, как вот. We were like ants. Just as some were finishing their task, others would immediately take their place. Everyone did their job, no matter how small it was. And that's how together we were able to fight the radioactivity. For 10 days, a new crew of bio-robots climbs on the roof every 10 minutes. According to military personnel, 3,500 people participate in the cleanup. Some, like Igor Kostin and Konstantin Fedotov, went up on the roof five times. We picked up pieces that were 1,500 ronjins. After a day of work, our hands would ache, and we could not make a fist. The first time I went up on the roof, I was struck by the mystical feeling there. It was like being on another planet. The whole thing was covered in radioactive waste. My hands were shaking. I didn't know what world I was in, and I started snapping photos. If you look close, you can see traces of radiation on the film. I was holding the camera like this, and it was coming up from the ground, like that. Your eyes hurt, and there was a metal taste in your mouth. Those are the two things you felt. And once you felt that, you knew you had gotten more than your dose. You couldn't feel your teeth up there. Your mouth was full of this lead taste. You went like this, but you couldn't hear anything. Everything was covered in lead. Even today, 20 years later, I can still taste the lead in my mouth. Thousands of them will discover that this peculiar taste means an invisible enemy is attacking. As the bio-robots are sacrificing their lives on the roof of the plant, the cleanup continues throughout the 30-kilometer zone, 24 hours a day, rain or shine. Where normally it would take one man one hour to do a job, here in Chernobyl, it took 60 people. When we came down off the roof, it felt like our blood had been sucked dry by vampires. We were drained. We could not move. Some people would have nosebleeds. The firemen were right there. If someone's nose started bleeding, they got sent to the hospital. If we collapsed, we got sent home. But we wanted to hold out. But at that time, we were young and strong. Our health is shot. We've lost everything. They wrote in my record that we got 20.5 ronjins. But what did that mean? That number was several times lower than the actual dose. 